Hello, welcome. I'm so glad that you carved out some time to listen to the Keto Diet Podcast. Today we're having one of my clients on to chat with you about her experience being on Weight Watchers, being diagnosed with diabetes in 2014, the symptoms that she experienced then versus now, what her goals are for her health, the things that are going on now, the work that she's put in. Oh, it's just, it's such an inspiring episode. I love having just regular people on the show to chat about their regular experience with their lives. You know, oftentimes I feel like we don't necessarily hear a lot of these in podcasts. I don't know, maybe I'm listening to the wrong podcast, but all the ones that I tune into are talking about how great their lives are because they had this one thing happen and now it's really great and buy their product. And while those can be super helpful too, and I mean, I've done many of those, okay, so like totally guilty as charged, but it can be nice and just grounding to hear from regular people just figuring out their lives and sharing their personal stories vulnerably with us. And so I'm really excited to have Beth McKay on the show today. Uh, We do talk about Happy Keto Body. If you're curious about that, you can just go to happyketobody.com. And yeah, let's, let's do this thing. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones, and heal your body. Starting and maintaining keto can be challenging without the right support. So just for listening to the podcast, I want to give you 20% off the keto beginning with the coupon code Keto Podcast. That's all one word. This 30-day program gives you a clear step-by-step how-to so you can quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles, and get the results you crave. Go to help healthfulpursuit.com slash begin to get your keto beginning discount today. If you're new around these parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international bestselling author of The Keto Diet, founder of happyketobody.com, or maybe you know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks so much for listening. Hey, Beth, how are you? I'm great, Leanne. How are you? I'm so good. It's so great to chat with a fellow Canadian. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Yes, I know. Me, me, in the, uh, me in Nova Scotia and you somewhere nice and warm and sunny. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't seem fair. Doesn't seem fair. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? So, uh, well, I gave away where I live in Nova Scotia. I actually am from Toronto and I I came out here in 2014 for eight months just to see what it would be like to live by the ocean. And I loved it so much that uh, I stayed. And it's just been it's been an incredible seven years of finally, you know, listening to the artist within and really giving her a voice uh, to become an artist. It's not how I make my living, but it's certainly how I have a lot of fun and and, uh, get lost and find myself in. I have been coaching women, uh, life coaching women for over 10 years and working with women in groups because I believe in the power of uh, the more I know myself, the better I can be prepared to handle the hiccups that happen in life. And I love to do that, you know, hold that space for other people to have those conversations within themselves and and, uh, to find better happiness within themselves in their lives. That sounds just so fantastic. I'm glad you're doing that work and connecting with people and and it sounds like building a community and with like minded people. That's just so fantastic. And what has been your experience with your health? And where did you come from? (laughs) Well, I, I, you know, it's 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 funny the the stories that we tell ourselves are the stories that we believe from growing up. I was led to believe that I had a weight problem as a child, and to put in Weight Watchers, I think in grade seven or eight, and so it, you know the things that you grow up being told are are you know a lot oftentimes the things that you end up believing and then creating. And when I look at my childhood pictures, it's like I wasn't really any bigger than anybody else, and and so it. Really really wasn't my story. And, and it has become a lifelong battle for me. And in 2005, I ended up 
rejoining Weight Watchers and I lost 100 pounds and found exercising and really transformed my life. And and due to a whole bunch of circumstances after that, I had always wanted to have a flat stomach and perky breasts. And so I, I, I had uh, plastic surgery and I ended up being uh, one of the statistics of the one in five million and something went wrong in my surgery and I lost my breasts. And thus came back the emotional eating. And I I haven't put all my weight back on, but I certainly gained about 50 pounds and became very sedentary. And and, uh, uh, just from my lifestyle choices, developed type 2 diabetes. And and so it's been a battle since 2014, actually, is when they diagnosed me with uh, with, um, type 2 diabetes. And and, I... I and COVID came along and, and uh, you know, we, we had to be in our houses, so to speak. We weren't allowed to go to parks or gyms and everything just closed. And uh, that sedentary took on a whole new level. And it, I ended up just like my digestion stopped working properly. My it just, like you know, just normal functions with my body stopped working and the inflammation grew and and I just was tired. And I just, you know, if I want to be able to, in last summer, I tried to hike uh, something that really should have been easy and it, it didn't nearly kill me, but it was really hard coming back from the 12 kilometer hike. And uh, it's just like, if I want to be able to be mobile when I'm 70, I have to do something about this now. Mm-hmm. Completely. And was that the kicker when you went for that hike that you were like, oh dear, I need to take matters into my own hands. Was that kind of the straw that broke the camel's back? Yeah, it's like I have to do something different. This is not working. And, you know, I've been following you. I I did the I'm I'm in your program, Keto for Women, the VIP program, and I have your book and and, uh, it's, uh, you know, and and, and I had great results on keto, but I I, I don't have a gallbladder. And I think that I had some side effects because of that. And I didn't know how to manage what I needed to do or, or, and I, I think the thing that frustrates me about the province that I live in is that there there's nobody that's willing to be open to having a conversation to finding out what does work. Mm. I too experienced that living in small town, Alberta, like just there's no help. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and so it, you know, it's, it, it, I just, it got to the point where I, <laughs> I literally stalked you and your, and your website until you <laughs> had openings <laughs> because that did happen. That did happen. <laughs> right? It, well, it did. It totally did. It, um, and I, I just, what, what I appreciate about what you are doing is, you know, the answers for everything is in our blood. It just makes so much sense. And uh, so that's, that's what brought me to you is uh, really wanting to get to the root of the problems that I've been having. Y'all have heard me talk about Blue Blocks before, the company that makes the best blue light blocking glasses and EMF blocking products. Blue Blocks has rebranded to Bond Charge with the same commitment to evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Their extensive range of premium wellness products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, reduce inflammation. The list is endless. From blue light blocking glasses to EMF management and circadian friendly lighting, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of our modern day way of life effortlessly and with maximum impact. An area that Bond Charge is leading the way in is EMF. Our modern technology has brought with it useful innovations. It has also exposed humans to man-made sources of electromagnetic fields, aka EMF that have impacted natural electromagnetic environment. This exposure to man-made EMF occurs both at work and home. The most common EMF exposure happens in everyday life from microwave ovens, mobile phones, laptops, earbuds, Wi-Fi, and 5G. And many people, especially those who have lived or worked in mold, are sensitive to EMF. 
While EMF exposure from mobile phones falls within stated safety standards, these standards were developed using the expected thermal effects of EMF only. They do not take into account the possible non-thermal effects. Numerous studies are currently investigating the potential health effects of weak or non-thermal radio frequency electromagnetic fields. In 2011, the International Agency of Research on Cancer, the IARC, classified EMFs as possibly carcinogenic to humans. In 2015, the Scientific Community on Emerging and Newly Identified Health Risk published a report on the effects of exposure to EMF on frequencies and ranges already used in mobile phones. More current data suggests that long-term use of mobile phones more than 10 years increases the risk of intracellular tumors. As a result, the IARC Advisory Committee recommended a reassessment of cancer risk in relation to EMF. The committee also suggested making the reassessment a high priority in upgrading EMFs to a probable cancer agent. In addition to being a possible carcinogenic, EMF may also cause other health issues including headaches, fatigue, general malaise, muscle pain, nausea, sleep disturbances, and short-term memory loss. So what do you do to protect yourself? Do what I do and block the EMF because getting off your laptop isn't always the most realistic solution. Bond Charge has EMF protection products that guarantee up to 99% EMF blocking. Some of their products include earphones, laptop mats, harmonizing sticker, a protection blanket that you can use while watching TV or on a flight, protection hat and beanie. You can go to bondcharge.com slash KDP and use the coupon code KDP to save 20%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash KDP and use the coupon code KDP to save 20%. Completely. And uh, it, it seems so simple, right? Of course, the answers are in our blood. Like, of course, that's where they are. But I mean, I was in nutrition for 12 years before a friend was like, have you thought about studying functional blood chemistry? That could really help you figure out what's going on here. I'm like, functional what a no? It just seems so like, of course, we should look to the cells because the cells are what make up every tissue and the tissues are what make up every organ. And if you're having an issue with an organ, look at the cells because that's the most simplest form that we have. Of course, mitochondria too, we can test that with something like an oats test and kind of figure out kind of where the mitochondria are. But newsflash, you can also see mitochondrial health in your blood work. And so yeah, that that too is what was like, wait a minute, this is such a simple simple thing to bring in and it gives us so many answers. What I find interesting in, in your story, and perhaps this is so many others, I, I know that it was mine too. A diagnosis wasn't enough. Was it like, w- when you received a diagnosis, were you like, oh, okay, maybe I should get a handle on this? Or did it take that breaking point of realizing that your body was not doing well to finally be like, okay, wait, this is not working for me. So it it was both. It it was a denial, you know, taking on that, that, that personal shame of, because type two diabetes is, and it's not for everybody. So I'm just going to speak for myself, but it is a lifestyle choice that I made from poor eating and not moving my body and, and just not allowing my body to process sugar. And so for a couple of years, I just denied it. And, you know, I didn't eat everything that I used to, but uh, I just took my metformin and, and went along with my, with my life. And, and, uh, but that, you know, got to a point where just, it wasn't working. And then I just, I, then when I tried to eat properly and to lose weight and, and, uh, uh, then that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, okay, something else is going on here. It's not just this. I'm not sure if I am answering your question properly, but, uh, I, I think it was just a combination of a whole bunch of things. Yeah. You answered it beautifully. Perfect. Yay. Completely. And what sort of symptoms were you experiencing like digestive wise and just did you have cravings and like what was going on? Did you have brain fog at that point? Like take us through kind of you're on this hike, your body's not doing what you want it to do. And what else was going on at that point? 
I think the biggest thing was like right below my sort of breast area, the, you know, my upper stomach was so hard and so bloated. Like I just, I felt like I, I, I had a steel plate underneath the skin in my abdomen and it just like, just no matter what I did or what I ate, it wouldn't go away. And there was times when my abdomen actually hurt. I wasn't regular uh, going to the bathroom uh, and I've been regular all my life. Like I would go three, four days without having a movement and they wouldn't be formed at all. And, and like those were two things. And, and I just, I didn't have any energy and I didn't realize about the brain fog until like literally a couple of weeks ago. And it's like, wow. But uh, I just, even just the mental faculty of, of just my clear mind wasn't there. You know, and and so I went to my doctor and, and they all just basically said, follow a Mediterranean diet, eat rice, eat bread. And it, I know enough and I've read enough that that isn't the answer. Mm-hmm. The answers weren't going to come by somebody telling me what to eat. That is such a powerful realization to have. You know, many of the women that I work with come to me like, and their diets are perfect. Like, I really have no critique. You're eating so wonderfully. And via my training, that should be enough. Like, diet should be enough. If your diet is on point and you're eating a ketogenic diet, you really, or a low carb diet, or just like a conscious, like for some, it's paleo and just around that realm of eating less carbs and not pounding back sugar, you're probably pretty good. And they're still experiencing so many symptoms. And that, to have that realization personally is, <sighs> did you feel kind of powerless of like, but now what? <laughs> Yeah, well, and and I think that that was the most frustrating thing because I, I pretty sure I waited for about eight months to get in with you. <laughs> it was about six, it, like it just like watching, 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 and and you know to find somebody who I knew that wasn't going to approach something that I wasn't working in my body from inside. Yeah, sorry you had to wait so long, friend. That's okay. You'll be happy to know I I set up a whole new flow of things and I now don't have a wait list. <laughs> so <laughs> lucky for all those women that are going to find you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the patience and persistence thing, you know, I think too, just I've had experiences also where I just <sighs> I think if anyone listening is feeling helpless and hopeless and, you know, with the diet piece we've talked about of like, it feels so on point, you started cleaning things up, um, eating better, but still dealing with issues. And I know that so many people have that where it's like, wait, I don't think diet is enough. A lot of us lose discouraged, like we get discouraged and we're like, okay, well, that didn't work. But I'd encourage you to keep going with the diet piece because it's doing something and then find a practitioner that you trust and that you're sort of obsessed over like, you know, like that you've, you've looked through everything and you've gotten a good handle on what they do, what their approach is, what, because I don't know if I will ever just go into a clinic and be like, Hey, you over there, can you help me with my health without knowing this person or knowing what their values are? or what their approach is going to be, that's a huge gamble. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. I mean, my I would love to have a vision where uh, East meets West and, and you know, where, where all the different modalities are actually working together as a team. You know, you have a GP, you have uh, someone like you, you have a natural path and, and uh, you have all the different ingredients to have a wellness team that looks at all aspects of, of yourself, because it's not just our bodies, it's our, it's our emotions, it's our mental uh, state, you know, and our physical state, and they all are interrelated to each other. Whether you're keto, low-carb, paleo, or somewhere in between, electrolytes facilitate hundreds of functions in the body, including the conduction of nerve impulses, hormonal regulation, nutrient absorption, and fluid balance. This is amplified on the ketogenic diet, but every human requires this balance. When you have adrenal hypo or hyperfunction, this affects your body's ability to balance sodium and potassium. Do you get headaches behind your left eye? This is a good sign that you need sodium. Headaches behind your right eye? This is a good sign you need potassium. 
Nearly every one of my clients that I work one-on-one -on -one with have an imbalance of electrolytes when they first come to see me. Symptoms such as headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, or seen right there in their blood work. Much of this is improved with proper electrolyte supplementation. Now, I personally consume at least one packet of electrolytes daily, and not just any electrolyte, element electrolytes, because it doesn't have sugar, fillers, coloring, artificial gunk, and has the effective electrolyte ratio that so many other guys don't do right with 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, 60 milligrams of magnesium, that perfect combination. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinklmnt.com slash KDP. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash kdp element offers a no questions asked refund so you can try it totally risk free if you don't like it share it with a friend and they will give you your money back no questions asked you really have nothing to lose i just love these guys again it's drink dot com slash kdp Yes. And um, my husband, who's really good at kind of making things make sense, <laughs> helped me understand as I was kind of talking through this about setting up a team and having a team that's working with you. Maybe there's somebody that you're talking with on a weekly or monthly basis. And maybe there's, there's a doctor that you're checking in with every six months to a year. I mean, it's not like you're seeing these people every week, all of them. But think of yourself kind of as the project manager of this project or like the general contractor, like you are the the manager of all these people and you get all the information and you get to decide what you do or don't do and then communicate your needs to your team. And that is such an empowering thought. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Just loves it. And so you, you have this realization that your diet is like, <sighs> is not enough. You just said like, my diet's not enough. You're experiencing these symptoms and how's the stomach pain situation going on? Like you said, it was so hard and you mentioned some GI stuff. What's going on now? So I think I'm pr actually, as of today, I'm three weeks in to the protocols that you had me on. And I, the, my, like, I'm having fairly regular movements, much more regular than they used to be. It, uh, it's like every second day, if not every day, which feels great. It, you know, I think that there's still stuff going on, but that's okay. It's better than it was. My stomach is not hard anymore and it doesn't feel as bloated. And so that's that that has been a great relief. And so the first week I really concentrated on my diet was was decent. But what was really important to me was getting on to the protocols of the supplements and making sure that I was getting those the second week, my diet cleaned up even better. And and I, what was it last week, last Tuesday night, I had a call that ended up going a lot longer. And it was about quarter to eight, I hadn't had dinner, I was hungry, I wasn't going to heat anything that I had in the fridge. And so I had these frozen vegan, gluten-free uh, bagels, which one would think is supposed to be healthy. So I toasted it, have it had it with avocado and tomato and, and some mayonnaise. And that was Tuesday night. My body didn't feel right till Friday. What? And it was like, and it was like Thursday night. It was like Friday morning when I, when I, you know, when, when I went to the washroom, it was like, it was like all the pieces fell together and it was like, oh, I can't eat those anymore. Yeah. And so it, it was like, that was such valuable information. It's like, like learning to really listen to the reaction of my body. And that's, that has like, I want to do that more uh, in terms of what I'm eating and what I'm not eating is really learning, you know, what, what nourishes me and what doesn't. I'm so glad you mentioned that. And also, I mean, there's so many pieces to what you just shared. And I really want to unpack everything like learning to listen to your body is super hard when there's stuff going on. And like the the protocols and things that you're going through 
is really a matter of clearing things. Like with all my clients, I set up a clear order of operations. It's sort of like this roadmap that I put together. And the reason I started doing this is because I've worked with a couple practitioners in the past because professionals still need professionals. And I've worked, I've worked with them and they never really told me where we were going. Like I would go to see them and they'd be like, boop, boop, boop. This is what we're going to do. But there was no like plan. And so it's always been really important to me as a practitioner to be like, okay, here's the plan. You're at point A, we need to get to point Z. Here's how we're going to do it. This is kind of the outline that we have. And so I think it's really important for us to understand that, yeah, there's still going to be stuff going on because we lived our way into this. It's going to take us living our way out of it. And so I think in today's society where it's like, we take a Tylenol and instantly our headache goes away or, you know, I mean, there's so many things that we can just do quickly to band-aid what's actually going on. Did the headache go away due to the Tylenol? Yes. Is the inflammation still there? Yeah. And you're probably going to have to deal with it later. Yeah. Um, so, but when we're working at root cause work, we're slowly, but like efficiently chipping away at that root cause area. And so, yeah, there's still going to be stuff going on still in that slow progression. But as you start to remove some of those areas and chip away at that block, you start to be able to hear a lot more. And I love that you had that reaction, even though it probably didn't feel good in the moment. You're like, oh, I never should have made that choice. But then you remember. So next time you get to say, okay, well, do I want that bagel? Because last time I did something like that, this is how I felt. And then you start making decisions, like actual choices, instead of making it rules. And that's just such a fun place to be in. And I'm glad that that's inspiring you as opposed to discouraging you. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, I only had like two or three left. So I just threw them out because I don't want to have I don't want to be eating food that's I'm going to have that kind of a reaction. And it was I remember actually like my my stomach got hard again and and like not hard as it was before I started the protocol. But it it was just like it was really clear. And and so it's just like, okay, that's not something I can eat anymore. And and, uh, you know, and I've made adjustments, I think, in week two, I had roasted some vegetables with avocado or with olive oil. And uh, I had, you know, and I just like the cal, like, and I, I'm not a calorie counter, but like it just, I, I, I was just by not doing that in this past week, I've noticed a difference. And, and so I'm just learning to listen to my body. And, you know, and so this, this week was more about food, like I've got the protocols down pat. Now it's, uh, you know, paying attention to what I'm eating, which I know I can always make improvements on. But uh, it's and I haven't had sugar since um, before the new year. Do you think you haven't had sugar because you've been trying to not have sugar? Or do you think you haven't had sugar because something in the protocol is like, you're just like, eh, I could go without the sugar? Uh, I think it, it was it, it was a conscious choice. Uh, you know, my A1C was really high when the blood work came back in December, well, nine. And uh, and that's scary. And so it, it's just like, again, I want to live a healthy life. And so if I and the thought of never having sugar again for the rest of my life just sends me down lanes that aren't pretty. And, and so it's just like, OK, for now, as I'm healing my body, it, it's a choice. I'm not going to eat sugar. And I just like the exercising hasn't isn't where I would like it to be the movement. But I've had normal blood sugar readings. Like this is, you know, now I am still taking my three metformins a day. But while I, you know, like, I think yesterday morning, I woke or yesterday, two days within the last couple of days before I went to bed, my blood sugar was 5.9, which is like not even diabetic. Wow. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you. (laughs) And it's like, oh, so, so, you know, a couple of things. I love eating keto because I just, I love the fat and the, and, and the protein. I really do. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to do that just because of my body makeup, but uh, the, you know, and I thought that that was the, not the only way, but the, the only way to get off of metformin and, and what I've just by a couple of days um, of taking my blood sugar, it's, it's just like, hmm, maybe I don't have to go on keto and I can get off the metformin and I could live a normal life, you know, uh, having normal blood sugar. 
Yeah. And do you mind if I share a little bit about the protocol, specifically the supplements? Please. Absolutely. Okay. So this might blow everyone's mind, but Beth isn't actually on anything that should quote unquote control her blood sugar. And so that is just, oh, I mean, we really don't understand, like a lot of people don't understand why glucose does what it does. And it's really important, you know, what Beth was talking about with your HbA1c, and that's like the gold standard, and you're watching that like really closely. But high glucose, some of the reasons why glucose can be high is due to inflammation, poor diet, of course, we know infection, acute stress, liver congestion, thiamine need, or just overall nutrient need. So what we actually did is support, like you said, you're, you don't have a gallbladder. So we got to support the gallbladder with the, the pain you were feeling at the bot, like at the top of your uh, stomach area, we start thinking, okay, is there some sort of bacteria stuff happening? And so as we put together this protocol, there's actually nothing in here that quote unquote, like there's no glucose management, anything in there to quote unquote, control glucose. And so I think a lot of the times we think that we need to add in the berberine and add in the glucose manager. And by by going at root cause stuff, you're starting to get those regular blood sugar readings. It's just that's awesome, isn't it? That's so cool. It's so well, and it's I think at one point in one of it, it might have been in some of our chat on the on the better practice platform, or talk, you actually said that the you know, that the, the metformin uh, decreases our the B12 and B, you know, B our vitamin B and vitamin D. And yeah. just by taking both of these supplements, it's just, you know, like it's supporting me and and I don't know if that's like I, I don't know what the result is but about a week and a half ago it was just like I woke up and my brain was clear <laughs> <laughs> isn't that just so fascinating you got it right yes metformin will actually reduce the body's ability to hold on to b12 uh, and sometimes folate also and so if somebody's on metformin taking a significant amount of b complex can be helpful and oftentimes when we don't have enough B complex and just overall B uh, vitamin B balance, we can start to have adrenal issues and it can actually increase our glucose. So we're taking something to help with our blood sugar that's affecting our Bs, which affects our blood sugar. And so, oh, it's so important to look at all those different parts. And you had mentioned too, so you were on metformin and your glucose was not regulated and it sounds like you were eating a relatively ketogenic diet. Did I get that right for listeners that may not have? No, I haven't been on eat following keto probably in about a year and a half just because I, I ended up, I, no matter what I took as supplements, I got constipated and I just, I could not go to the washroom regularly and I just couldn't figure, I just didn't have the tools to figure it out. On a keto, if I were on a ketogenic diet, I wouldn't need metformin because my blood sugar was completely normal. I really hope you're enjoying today's episode. I'd love to see where you're listening from. You can snap a pic and tag me at Leanne Vogel or leave a review for the show on your favorite podcast player. It helps me out tremendously. Okay, back to the good stuff. Yeah. So you were kind of playing this balance just so listeners can understand and kind of pick it all together. You went on keto, it caused constipation, it just wasn't work for you. So you got back on metformin so that you could have more carbohydrates so that you could go to the bathroom and you yes. weren't able to regulate your glucose that way. But through adding in a protocol that didn't even address blood sugar, uh, we've been able to kind of keep that balanced so that you can get a handle on everything. Is that yes. a fair summary? Yeah. Yeah. That's so fun. And so um, we've talked a little bit about the symptoms that have reduced kind of what are your goals? We've talked about kind of the bra, the, the bra, oh my gosh, the straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> Is it Friday yet? Um, and so kind of what are your goals? Like, where do you want to take this thing for everyone listening? Well, I so I so I got on the scale uh, at the beginning of the week, which I don't like to do, and it was just like because I thought I was about another twenty pounds heavier than I am, and that was uh, it was like oh okay, 
I'd like to lose about 40 pounds. I, I think that I would be a lot happier in my body if I was 40 pounds lighter. And I would love to not have to take metformin. And so I, I realized that, like that, that's, that's the, the goal. And it's going to require me to move my body. And it's going to require me to pay attention to what I put in my mouth and, and uh, a, a whole bunch of things. And, and, uh, but that's sort of the goal. I want to do this. It, it's Cape Split. It's this beautiful 12, like six kilometer hike in and six kilometer hike back. And it's just this stunning place in Nova Scotia. And I want to do it not quite skipping, but I really want to do it with ease this coming August. That's a great goal. I love this goal. And I'm sure yeah. I'm sure so many women can relate to so much of what you've shared, Beth. I so, so appreciate. Do you have any uh, words of encouragement or like final things that you really want to share with somebody that might be listening? I, th- I think uh, one of the things that took me a long time in life to learn was uh, self-forgiveness and compassion and being gentle. I'm not going to be perfect, nor uh, is, is this path going to be perfect. And it, it's like setting my being kind to myself, I think it, it is it has been instrumental. And, and it just it makes me feel better about the choices that I'm making. That is beautiful. Beth, thank you so much for coming on the show today and chatting with me. I am oh, I am so proud of you for the work that you're doing. I'm so encouraged by what you've already accomplished. And I feel so blessed to be on this journey with you. And it's just so great to catch up with you in this way. Likewise. I hope you enjoyed our show today with Beth. I cannot wait to share next week's episode with you. So I look forward to seeing you back here next Tuesday for that. Okay, bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. Music for the Keto Diet Podcast provided by Yechi. Follow Jacob on Instagram at Yechi underscore official and on Spotify as Yechi. That's Y-E-C-H-I. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.